tonight. How many black people does it take to build an economy? The answer is four. Seriously? Yes. The answer is four. If I can get four black people together who have some resources and have a plan, we can start from there. TBA, why do you say that? In every community, what are the four basic things that every community needs? Shelter, water, food. Well... Food and water go into the category of food, to be totally honest. You gotta have food. You gotta have clothing. Housing. You gotta have shelter. Yeah. Electricity, my power. <laughs> food, shelter, clothing, water, water. Yeah. Utilities. And money. Shit. You have to have those things available. We need to have... One of the black folk needs to build a housing complex. You have to... Uh, one of those black folks should be building... Real estate. Land. One of you should have your finger on some land. So that your people have a stable place to live. A subdivision, an apartment building. You ought to have the shelter thing. At least we ought to have a foothold. One of you ought to have a grocery store. A modern. Let me thump this damn microphone. Might bend my damn diaphragm in there. Is this thing on? One of you ought to own the grocery store. Now, maybe it doesn't have to be, you know, this Walmart mega center. No, it doesn't need to be that. But it ought to be a big, clean, modern, up-to-date facility. And that's going to cost you about a half million dollars. It ought to be a big, modern, clean, up-to-date, well-lit facility. And that goes under modern people. We're not going to sit here and take the feed store and turn that into a grocery store. You need to build one from the ground up. That apartment building, that subdivision needs to be built from the ground up to our specifications. Why is that? Because we need to start building our own culture and the grocery store ought to look like Africans own it. You see people, the work has been handed down from Dr. John Henry Clark and Joseph Ben Yakanan. The work has been handed down. They taught us and young men like me about nation building. And that's what I'm describing to you all tonight. Your grocery stores are supposed to reflect African identity. And your homes are supposed to reflect African architecture. And I'm talking about from Egypt all the way to the Horn. It is supposed to reflect our sensibilities as Africans. 
A lot of you don't even know what I mean by that, by the way. Look it up. I ain't talking about no damn huts either. First thing some of you African architecture, he means huts, don't he? Somebody take Hodor out of here. You are supposed to have a grocery store that provides that. Next, you need to have a clothing store. You do not have that. Will someone please tell me where the national black clothing chain is? Tell me. I'll wait. Mona? Anybody? We don't have one. We don't have one. So when it's time for us to even get our own clothing, we cannot look to our people for that. We need a realtor who deals in the acquisition of land. We need a black person for our shelter, at least to get the ball rolling. A black person for the grocery store, at least to get the ball rolling. And a black person for your clothing, at least to get the ball rolling. And then you vertically integrate from there. Vertically. First you own the clothing store, then you own the clothing distributors, and next you own the clothing manufacturer. But you see, you'll never get to manufacturing. It's, uh, we tend to work in the wrong direction in a lot of cases. We should be able to hit it coming and going. Hell, we should be able to meet in the middle. We ought to have black stores and black manufacturers. The black distribution takes care of itself at that point. Zulu was in the chat room talking about how architecture affects our senses. You see, we don't have an African identity. And when we own the architecture, we build architecture that reflects our identity. You begin to become proud to be an African when an African is able to show you these modern designs. You go take a look at the World Trade Center and the World Trade Complex. Take a look at all the thought that went into every aspect of designing that. It reflects their sensibilities. And we need to do the same thing. Our stores, that need to, they need to have the same thing. The fourth part of your economy is the media. We need to have a communication apparatus. If you have those four things, you have successfully built an economy. You have successfully built an economy. And guess what? We don't have any of those things. But if we did, you got a powerhouse. Now, what is the next thing that our four anchor businesses do? What's the next thing that they do? The next thing, our four, our four pillars of our economy here. We just need four people. What do those four people do next? Next thing you do is you go down to that church. And we make it very clear to pass the cornbread and pass the pork chop. That Negro, we got the money to crush you now. We've got the resources to crush you now. And we know that City Hall put a bug in your ear. Well, look here, nigga. I'm putting the bug in yours. You get on the ball. And to this Sunday's sermon is going to be about white supremacy and how to stop it. And if your sermon is not about that, we going to start doing some things to get you the hell out of here. Because just like we built that grocery store, and just like we built that apartment complex, and just like we built that TV station, Mona, what can you do next? Get you out of there. You can build a new church at that point. Yeah. 
Buddy, we're builders. We are builders. We built a modern, up-to-date clothing store. We built a modern, up-to-date grocery store. We built a modern, up-to-date subdivision. We will build a modern, up-to-date church. And we won't move you out, Negro. We will sweep you out. And if you don't leave, we will blow you out. But understand, you're gonna tow the black line. Not no if, ands, or buts. You're gonna tow it. You are going to do it. Or there will not be a church here anymore. We see an eye to eye on that Padre. No, you all have never heard black empowerment pronounced like this, but this is what it's supposed to be. If that church is not serving the interests of the black people in the community, then that church has no business being there. And it must be removed. No, you've never heard anybody tell you that before. Now, once we have the church, we've got the family. You see, our business already gave us a stranglehold on the money, but now we gotta make sure that everybody goes along with the program. This is nation building, people. This is nation building. You can do this in a five block radius. If you can take five blocks, you can take a city. Nobody ever explained that to you before tonight. If you can take five blocks, you can take a city. Once we have the church, that is the place where people will gather and you will give them the community's ideology. And the pastor will disseminate the ideology of black empowerment. And if he refuses to do so, he will no longer be pastor. You will get with the church elders and you will say that he must be uninstalled. And we will get a pastor that we chose and we picked. Who's we? The elders of the church? No, nah, y'all ain't doing too good picking pastors. Um, the guys who own the grocery store and the apartment complex and, 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 and the clothing store we'll take and, and, and the realtor will take care of all that from here. And the TV station. We'll take care of picking pick the next pastor. Because y'all's y'all track record ain't so good. So we'll take care of that for you. Y'all just go collect them tithes. Oh, I'm sorry. You want us to give for the tithes, don't you? Yeah, you were depending on me and my business for the tithes. You know what you do to a church Mona that doesn't do your bidding? When you're a business owner, you drop a check for 10000 When you're a business owner, next Sunday we drop a check for 20000 We tell Pastor Cornbread, you're not talking about what we need to talk about, brother. Well, brother, the Bible says that. You're not talking about what we need to talk about, you ex pimp con man, son of a bastard. Now, let me explain this to you, Rico. Next Sunday's sermon is going to sound like Jason Black, and if it doesn't, Things are going to change quickly. We show up next Sunday. Pastor Cornbread is still talking about pray to Jesus for your rent. This Sunday, my tithe check is $10. Not $10,000. It's $10. And I get with the grocery store and the clothing store. You see, we all were given $10,000 a week. Now, this Sunday, we give you a check for $10. And we tell you that if you don't get your act together, next Sunday will be a check for 10 cents. And we're making it a check. We're going to force you to go spend gas money to go and cash that damn thing. That's right. You're going to spend a dollar in gas to go, ca to go cash 40 cents in checks. We are making a point to your ignorant jigaboon ass. That is how you get the attention 
of a church that is not doing your bidding. And I'm not a religious person and I know how to do that. See, you all never had your pastors and your parents. Your parents have betrayed you. You never had them explain that this is what black empowerment looks like. You do not ask the church to preach black empowerment. You instruct your church to teach black empowerment. And if they do not, then there will be consequences for refusing to do so. Next thing you know. He's getting uninstalled. And if it's his church that he made, you leave that jigaboon where he is. And you build a brand new spanking church directly across the street. Because as you know, Mona, there's always dissension at the church. Yes. Getting the choir director is no problem. Please. Those are mercenaries. You can have that whole damn church cleared out in two weeks. I know I've seen it done. I've helped. TBA? Yes, I have. I've helped clear out buildings. I've worked for the biggest corporations in this country. I've seen them wipe out the little guy. I've watched them do it decade after decade, and I learned a lot. And unlike regular businesses, your church does not have antitrust protection. Oh! Pastor Cornbread is about to take it hard on the chin. But you see, this takes us having the ability to do that. It is not simply good enough that you are upset. You must have the resources with which to transform your neighborhood. Once we got the church, we got the mammies, we got the children, we got everybody. Once we got the church, we can. the churches want to start up schools. I think that's a great idea. Now we can move from there. Your church buys your legitimacy in the neighborhood. Now that we've bought our legitimacy, we take it from there. Now we got the minds and the hearts and everything. And they will be with us because unlike the previous regime that they were living under, we actually serve the interests of black empowerment. That's the difference. And they will be able to tell the difference. Because you know why? They work at our store. And when we get to the church, we're going to tell them that Jesus said that bad people do not shop at the African grocery store. We're going to tell them that Jesus said that bad women, no good women, wear red bottoms. Kind of like the ones that uh, Sister Casey there is wearing. That they did not buy from the African clothing store. You start seeing what the sermon starts sounding like now. The sermon starts convicting people of their sins. Yeah, it's that real. But you don't have an apparatus for that. When you have your black radio station or your black TV station, you get to, you get to promote your businesses. And you get to have shows on and talk shows and music that reflect that. Now we've taken over a 100 block radius. We got a hundred blocks. We've got a community and the radio station and the church reflect our values. And guess what people? It started with only four people. Just four. Now, do you all know how close to that we are right here on the Black Channel? Simone is a realtor. I'm doing the media thing. We got some folk here who deal in clothing. Now we just need to have our own storefront for it. Understand something, people. Once we get organized things start happening. Now, once you have that 100 block radius, what happens to police brutality? Well, at that point, that 100 block radius starts to resemble a roach motel. You check in. 
blue boy. But you don't check out. Brothers and sisters, if they take one of yours, you are supposed to take ten of theirs. I said that and I will repeat that. If they take one of yours, you are supposed to take ten, twenty of theirs. And the code. Now that we've got our church and our community in place, we use our businesses, our media, our religion, our educational system. We, we teach the little children in school that there is a code in this community. Oh, I'm not religious, but I'm having church in here tonight. We teach the little children that there is a code in Blacktown. And if little Billy breaks the code, little Billy gotta leave. Little Billy's mammy got to go. Not tomorrow night, Wainch. You got to go tonight. That some bacon got smoked. And little Billy wants to run his mouth. And because his mammy didn't teach him the code properly. Little Billy and his mammy got to go. That the code is everything. The code is life. The code is the only thing that prevents these bastards from coming in here and gunning our children and our mothers down. And that is why we live by the code. Because you cannot live without the code. That you let your, your friends know that I don't go shopping at the mall anymore. I only shop at the Black Wall Street. Mona, do you think they understand? We're intelligent black society. Yes, I believe they understand. It's been broken down so eloquently, they have to understand. Now, why is it the old Fred Price ain't did that yet? Because he want all the power, wealth, and influence. He want the control. If they start branching out on their own, that's less more money for him. He can't buy five and six homes. He can't go on lavish um, vacations. He can't purchase Bugattis and, and Bentleys and Benzes and, you know, send his kids to school and wear $1,000 suits and have all the jewelry eat out every night. This is the Black Channel. For those of you who are listening in for the first time tonight, I know that a lot of you have Missouri on your mind. A lot of you have Ferguson on your mind. And you have your eyes on the situation in the St. Louis area. But what I want to tell you is that that is a waste of time and energy and resources. Why? Because you are not actually discussing the answer. If you are not building an economy, then you can't do a damn thing about police brutality, about the drug laws, about poverty, about the schools. You aren't going to fix anything. If you did not bring power, wealth, and influence, nothing changes. Absolutely nothing changes. If you are unwilling to deal with that, you cannot fix the problem at all.